my friends, it's your old pal Jordan the Lion and your old pal Jaw. We're working our way through Kansas en route to Kansas City today. Days with Jordan the Lion and Jaw. And you all, it begins right now. There's the man. He's not too conversive right now, but uh, I like having him here. So we've made our way to Overland Park, just outside of Kansas City. We're gonna explore a couple of things here today. Here's our first stop of the day, Johnson County Arts and Heritage Center. So one of the things that I'm really excited to see here is they have an old, well, an all-electric house, I think from the 1950s. These are pretty great too. <laughs> so we drove about four hours without showing you really anything today. Partly because there was really nothing to show and the other part was because I was addicted to the new Connections album. If you like the intro and outro songs that I use, it's a band called 84 Nash that morphed into a band called Connections and they put out a new album called Cool Change about two weeks ago and I was obsessed with it the whole drive here. <laughs> This should be quite an experience. I'm excited. They were telling me it's like an event center, theater, dance studio, a little bit of everything, but the art exhibit all starts downstairs. Look at that bowling pin though. <laughs> King Louie. King Louie Lanes. It's a local bowling alley. Let's learn about Johnson County. Oh, they're winning me over with the giant neon sign right there. Whew, that's a beauty. Let me read up on it over here. The White family opened the White Haven Motor Lodge in 1957 with 56 rooms. This large neon sign beckoned travelers along Highway 69, today's Metcalf Road. By 1964, the motel had expanded to 172 rooms. In 2001, Whitehaven became the oldest of 31 hotels in Overland Park. After selling the Motor Lodge to developers, the motel closed its doors in June 2010. The furnishings and the neon were sold at auction. In October, the Whitehaven Motor Lodge was demolished. Wow, that's sad. At least they saved the sign though. I love that. Oh, this is great. It says Jeff Miller, owner of Bright Idea Signs and More, donated the equipment and labor necessary for the Whitehaven Signs restoration and installation. Created a thousand feet of new neon tubing from the sign's original pattern. That was a big sign. Wow. That would have looked great. So here they're talking about the funding of the original, the new arena, and it says in the 1970s, proposed arena in Overland Park aimed to boost tourism, Kansas City professional sports teams, the NBA Kings and NHL Scouts needed a venue. Overland Park was prepared to welcome both teams and a proposed new arena. Kansas legislature approved a 1% restaurant tax to fund the project. Local restaurateurs fought the additional tax and successfully blocked the measure costing Overland Park the arena. Both teams found a new home at Kemper Arena in Kansas City. The reason I'm showing that is because Kemper Arena is where Owen Hart, the wrestler, had his accident and fell to his death. Here we've got the old courthouse and they've got the county treasurer door right here, as well as the doorknob. Another regional sign, John's Taylor Shop. Over here that drew my attention, they've got this mirror for Leaf Finest Western Wear. Companies that moved to Johnson County right here. After World War II, companies that invented the bumper sticker moved to Mission in the early 1960s and later to Lenexa. Lee Jean Company moved from Kansas City to Merriam in 1966. Delco Battery and King Radio opened plants in Olaf in 1956 and 1961. Then they've got some shopping mall doors here, talking about the decline of the shopping mall and Harsfeld's department store 
downtown Kansas City since 1913, opened a store at Corinth Square. These doors are from that store. Note the eight shaped door handles. There they are. And then here's some of the stuff that would have been sold there, including some gloves with their logo on it. And I promised you the 1950s all electric house. This is it. How cool is this? They built a house inside the museum. <laughs> all the way down to the car out front. Take all that in. That is great. We get a walk through the house. That I thought was just so cool. Front yard with the barbecue. Kids playing outside over here. All American family doing the clothes on the clothesline. Barbecue. This reminds me of the Al Bundy barbecue setup. Lawnmower. Then the front door up here. Now let's go on in. I don't believe anyone's in there right now. Have the whole house to ourself. <laughs> this is amazing. Since it's a 50s house, let's take in the details of it. Like the fixtures and the architecture. Those three windows. I love that they even put a frisbee up here, <laughs> stuck in the spouting, and a, like a little toy airplane up here stuck on the roof. So here's the kitchen, and your closet, putting up your jacket and everything, your nice old camera. Your ice skates. <laughs> so I'm trying to think of how the best way. Let's let's end it kind of well, I probably should have went that way, but here's the living room. Nineteen fifties all electric house. The time of prosperity by nineteen sixty the Johnson County Bridian household income was eight thousand one hundred and sixty one dollars thirty percent above counties in Kansas City metropolitan area so there you would have seen film strips for entertainment making their Dean martinis over here on the table some soft music playing get the decorations over here that's where you would have projected the television. A little sitting room time in here. This is great. B nice big window. And then another door back in the corner behind the movie screen. And then a connecting walkway into your kitchen, which we will do next but I want to show you, since it's right behind us, one of the bedrooms. It says, watch any television show from the 50s and you'll notice they all have one thing in common. The married couples slept in separate beds. Societal norms didn't condone showing double beds in public settings and the Federal Communications Commission prohibited television programs from suggesting married couples shared a bed. <laughs> it was seen as indecent. Of course it was. What's indecent is sharing a single bed for two people. <laughs> it says, glamorous spouse they saw on I Love Lucy or Ozzie and Harriet began to sleep in separate beds because of seeing them on TV. Huh. 
There's a little light switch right there. So we'll go back the way we came. We'll take a look at the kitchen. And we'll see the rest of the house. All of it's covered in plexiglass, I love that. Nobody can take anything or do anything destructive. This is awesome, what an experience. I know I say that a lot, but I'm constantly amazed at what lengths places go to provide experiences like this. All the old kitchen, kitchenware and stuff in here. Our ice box fridge. And then we just walked in through this way. So there we would have our dishes and even dishwasher. Oh yeah, baby, we're modern here. We have electric plugs. Where are the USB ports? <laughs> Yeah, what would they think? There's your stove. And your ovens. Your little green telephone. And then another look into this room. The dining room and the living room that we saw from a different angle. And then over here, it says, changing role of the kitchen. The ranch style house made the kitchen the focal point of the home. Earlier, kitchens were small and located at the back of the house to keep the heat, noise, and smell from the rest of the house. But now kitchens were front and center, which yeah, that's just to the right is where we came in. And you got your kitchen windows looking right out in your front yard here. Then over here we have the ironing and laundry room, sewing room, saving time. Appliances in the 1950s were designed to save consumers time and effort. Time saving appliances were all the rage, advertising with buzzwords like automatic and push button. Some of the most major changes came to the laundry room. Electric clothes irons and dual washers were said to save the housewife a full day, a week in work. All right, back through the house. Let's see what we haven't seen yet, which is over here. We don't even have to open the door. Well, I don't think we're allowed to. <laughs> There's the closet. Milk of magnesia. Somebody's got some problems. And then behind us is the bathroom. Designers in the 1950s use a bright and cheerful color palette reflecting consumers' optimistic outlook. Bathrooms became as color coordinated as the rest of the home. Sinks and toilets, bathtubs, even soap and toilet paper came in coordinated colors. These included Ming Green and Regency Blue. The most color, most popular color was First Lady Pink, named for Mamie Eisenhower's love of the color. And here we have the children's room. Oh, and a look into the ladies makeup area, vanity area. This was the kids room of course. The boomer generation born between 1946 and 1964 came of age at a time of incredible prosperity. By 1964 they made up almost 40 percent of the nation's population. Dr. Spock 1946 common sense book of baby and child care revolutionized child rearing tactics for many parents. The most popular names in the 1950s were James and Mary. Lots of toys. Mm. 
Yep, all electric house. This was pretty fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I did. My bathroom. All right, let's get in my car and get out of here. Who's the best friend you ever had? Wizzo! It's not my saying, it was Wizzo's. See? Local legend. And then over here, look, the drinking water coming in toxic barrels. Look at that mail sign, that's great. The hot dogger. Oh, I bet that was fun. Here we have the brownie movie camera. These are to stop your guests from having their ice hit them in the mouth while they're trying to drink their water. Put one of those inside the cup. And look, you can drink with no problems. That's great, they call the all electric house a lazy man's paradise, the home of tomorrow that's ready today. As business grew in Johnson County, so the need for well protected banks before banks were federally insured, a good sturdy safe was the only protection patrons had from losing everything. Cannonball style safes were advertised as fire and burglar proof. This safe was purchased by the Lenexa State Bank in 1908 and weighed 4,500 pounds. This was totally worth a stop. I enjoyed it. Before we leave, I noticed they have a local candy here and I was asking about it and they said that this man named Samuel Cyphers opened up a candy shop in 1903 and made these by accident. One of his employees enjoyed the vanilla extract a little too much and so Sam decided to take a chocolate cup and dip it in and it's similar to if you've ever had a mallow cup, I would guess that's what it's like. We're gonna go ahead and get one though. Said he sold them during World War II, but they stopped making them due to the ingredient shortage. So make sure you get them when you can. How great is this? When I bought the candy, she gave me a little bag and it has the art on there. This place was great, I highly recommend it. Now our next stop is going to be one of the more unorthodox graves we've visited. Look at you being a good boy in here. I even found a nice place in the shade. You had the air blowing on you. Look at you like a king. Now we're going to a place called Prairie Hill. Just out of respect, I felt like we have to go to this next stop. So as you can see, we have to drive into this community. As we get to the end of this cul-de-sac, look at this, right in the center. See this American flag and you see around it, there's all these beautiful homes, but at one point, it was a farm. And much like what happened to Toto from The Wizard of Oz, when Toto died, he was buried, and then later the land was taken over by the county to put the freeway in. This used to be Wolford Farm. And the grave here is a former Kentucky Derby winner. There you can see it says Wolford Farm. There you see Lauren, the 1938 Kentucky Derby winner. So won the Kentucky Derby around three years old. And then over here was another horse in Sco. 1928, 1939, he goes on to greatness through his progeny. And they actually have pictures, which is great. You can see here, there's a picture of him winning and then the owner with the cup even some pictures from the race 
I think it's a real act of class that they put the horse tie up out here or left it out here. Kind of sad to think when you bury or when the owner buried these probably thought the farm would be in the family forever. <laughs> but rest in peace Lauren. 1938 Kentucky Derby winner. If everything works right, we have enough time to get to Fritz's and eat before they close. They close at three o'clock, which I did not know, but it might just be karma because we might get over there. It looks like we'll get over there at 2.25. Fritz's Union Station Restaurant. Well, we did it. We made it to Fritz's. There's something special that happens here you guys are gonna love. drive throughs only available if you're in a train. Awesome. Take a look at this. They said that you uh, place your order by the phone in the booth. I love it. Very old school. We'll do this one. So you'll notice above us that there's a track. When your food's ready, after you place your order over the phone, they bring it to you on the train track. All right, let's check out this menu. I think I might do something simple, just get either a tenderloin sandwich or a grilled ham and cheese. Maybe I'll get some uh, tater tots or tater ties. Yeah, can I get a grilled ham and cheese with pickles on the sandwich and use American cheese, please? Excellent. Oh, and a uh, uh, water and a coffee if you can. Oh, oh, don't worry about that. Let's do a Coca-Cola then. Awesome. Um, tater ties. Thank you. I love that the booths next to the windows have a way of playing the jukebox. Isn't that great? And this one over here has it also. All right, ours must be next. I ordered after them. Back it goes to its home. Just all the way around in the other room as well to get back to the kitchen, <laughs> which is over here. I hope this is mine. It's coming our way. Oh yeah. Thank you. Bring it on down. Woo! Little Ric Flair woo for you. Why can't all restaurants run like this? That's perfect. Nothing special. You saw just a grilled cheese and tater. Tops. I really wanted the pickles on the sandwich. That's kind of why I said it, but I guess I'll put them on myself. Let's give it a try. But we haven't had group plan yet either. Mm -hmm. Good I'll shop. Be Good pop though. But the things are great. These I've already had and the sandwich was pretty good. This was pretty great. I enjoyed it. Well, my friends, we're going to call it a day. I hope you enjoyed our day today. We will have more for you next vlog. Thank you for traveling with John and I, and we will see you all next time from Kansas City. Have a great night, and goodbye. Woo-hoo!